Okay, now that we're past the technical difficulties. Okay. Got a prelude. So we're going to go right into um, announcements. So if you're online and you have a birthday or um, an anniversary or some other celebration to announce, uh, please send that in on the, um, on the chat line. And same with any prayer requests. I guess I should start off by saying good morning. Welcome to work. Beautiful sunny day. Sunday. Not a lot of new announcements anyway. Uh, uh, there's still a notice in the bulletin about um, funding for the uh, earthquake. And uh, this Sunday is the last Sunday to let Roberta know if you do not want to continue receiving your Broadview magazine subscription. And I know Len has an announcement for us. Morning. Uh, 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 I just like to that um, we want to really like to begin that um, the sign up sheet was uh, normally at the back I understand um, so, um, may want to keep an eye on that, um, begin this maybe in a week or two. Um, the other thing is that, our, um, if you haven't already, uh, we will be entering Holy Week in uh, a week's time, I believe, and, um, we will be having a service here uh on monday thursday which i believe is april the 6th that's 6 30. um here and then on Okay, and, and I also noticed in the spring newsletter that Supper is coming up. And the date for the Oyster Supper is April the 1st. Yeah. 
announcements on the chat line, but I know of a couple of, an, of celebrations. Ant. So, uh, so yeah. Oliver or Ollie, as he'll be called. Carol was born and um, handling. So I'm going to put our, 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 and this is the other announcement. We have Don Telfer playing with us today because Kathleen is off in the Caribbean enjoying the sun. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you play happy birthday? <laughs> and we'll sing happy birthday to Ernest. We'll just sing it, okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. So let's take a moment of silence to sense ourselves as we prepare to worship the Lord our God. And our opening hymn is number 385, Spirit Divine.
Oh Jesus, you wept over your friend Lazarus. Do you still weep over for us? Do you weep when forest fires rage, when homes are burnt, animals die, and the smoke blows? Do you weep as floods destroy homes and livelihoods? Do you weep for those suffering from illness and for their families? Do you weep for those who live with a myriad of wearies, anxieties, and depression? Do you weep for injustice, for those who experience ongoing racism, bullying, and discrimination of all sorts? Do you weep for those who have no more tears to shed, who have no prayers to say, who have no more dreams to dream? Then we are willing to shed our tears with you. We shed tears for the world you love. And we sing. going to pray. Christ, who wept with us and with us, who knows that you are in your pain and suffering, we know that you are in our deepest longings. We long for your kingdom to come. We pray that our tears and sorrows would lead to tears of joy. Then may our tears of joy turn into a celebration as we dance our way into a revolution of your love. Amen.
Anybody here ever lost a pet or someone you love? How did you feel? Uh, Lost. Oh, how you felt. You smiled and you laughed and you ran and you skipped and you danced. How did you show that you were feeling lost or angry or sad? Tears? Withdrawn? If you were Jewish, you'd wear an article of clothing or at least a piece of close friend, last friend, grieved his death, including Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus began to weep. It's okay to cry when we're sad. Even Jesus cried. And then after he cried, Jesus did something else. He prayed. Today's story reminds us that sad things happen in life to everyone. It's something we all have in common. When those sad things happen, it's okay to feel sad and to or if our sense of being lost is not the end of the story. Sadness is not where the story ends. When we're sad, let's do what Jesus did. Let's cry. And then invite God to join us in our sadness. And who knows what will happen when we invite God in. Maybe we'll find you for sending Jesus to show us how to live our lives, how to respond to those moments of sadness and despair, to show us that it's okay. to be upset, to be sad, go into that time of upset. Thank you. Amen. We're going to sing number 703. In the bulb, there is a flower. Flies will soon 
the dawn and our darkness, bringing hope to you and me. And for those of you who are looking at your books, it's refrain to them. Out of the depths have I called to you, O God, hear my cry. If you should keep account of what is done amiss, O God, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, therefore we will honor you. <laughs> A soul waits for God more than the watchers long for morning. Oh, oh, Israel, wait in hope, for with God there is love unfailing. With the God is great power to redeem, to redeem you, Israel, from all your sins. Scripture this morning is taken from John's Gospel. Listen for the word of God. Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus. Lord Jesus heard it. He said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place. And 
the disciples. Let us go again. The Jews were now trying to see you and you go there again. And Jesus answered, the daylight. Those who are dead because they see light world. But those who walk at meaning this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death. But they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I and the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah. the Son of God, the one coming into the world. She had her privately. She went to him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. And they followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there him she knelt at his feet and said to him lord if you had been here my brother would not have died when jesus saw her weeping and the jews who came with her also weeping he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved he said where have you laid him and they said to him lord come and see jesus wept so the jews said See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said, Lord, already the stench because he's been four days. And Jesus said, Did I? Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. May God add a blessing to the reading of this holy word and forever write its meaning in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. And we're going to sing number 611, Out of the Depths, O God.
we call to you. You know, every year we read that piece about the raising of Lazarus. And I always think of the Easter Bunny when I read that. Because he comes out of the tomb, but he's bound. His hands and his feet are bound. So what, how does he get out? <laughs> he must be like the Easter Bunny coming out of the cave. Because they don't unbind him until after he comes out. And I can't figure and there was a piece about when we lived in Strathroy our neighbor was someone who who used to self-harm. Actually, I think she was good information from National Health Services in the UK, the Mayo Clinic in the US, and the Canadian Mental Health Association websites. Apparently, I was wrong. There's lots of reasons. 
as a way of coping with grief, loss, violence, or chronic illness to make emotional pain physical pain or as a way to deal with emotional pain or distress. So, as a way of dealing with the more emotional and emotional outbursts of the people in our society are less emotionally mature than in the past, and if so, why that might be. I don't have any answers, just questions. People in our time are not the only ones to experience intense emotions. Jesus, on being from the news of Lazarus' death, he knew that Lazarus was truly dead and not just near death because he'd been in the tomb four days. That was the medical standard in his day. If you've been in the tomb four days, You're dead. At that point, he would have been starting to compose. Being real. And in response, Jesus, instead of cutting or burning or biting himself, well, let me read the shortest sentence in the Bible. Jesus wept. Jesus experienced the grief of the death of a good friend. Not like his disciples who were students, but a friend. Someone who believed in him and what he was doing. Someone who supported his ministry. And Jesus empathized with the grief that Mary and Martha Lazarus' sisters were feeling, and those feelings overwhelmed Jesus, and he wept. And after he wept, what did he do? Anybody paying attention during children's time? He prayed. Yeah. He prayed, and he called on Lazarus to come out of the tomb. Okay, so here we're clearly on the divine So let me ask a question. This is not a rhetorical question. Does it matter that Jesus was divine? Let's start. Yes, no. Does it matter? Hands up. Abstaining? Hands up. Okay, so the yeses have it. It matters that Jesus was divine. So why does it matter? Why does Jesus' divinity matter to us? For proof? And that there is a God. So proof that there is a God. Anybody else? Why does Jesus' divinity matter?
โอเคครับโซดัตส์เพราะว่า divinity matters because it's easier for us to understand the three and one so why does Jesus divinity matter okay Tabitha nobody else is saying anything what do you think Weeks and now of him saying, "I am, I am the bread of life. I am the way. I am the gate. I am the door. I am the living water. I am the resurrection and the life." And it matters. His divinity matters because he's headed to the cross. And if he's not divine too, he's just another person that the Romans are going to crucify. Why does Jesus' divinity matter? This is what I came up with. Only a God who is more powerful than our problems is capable of saving us from those problems. If Jesus is not divine, He. Can't save us. Divinity matters. And strong emotions and we here's the next question. Do you think it matters? So why? Why do you think it's important that Jesus was human? John three verse. For God so loved the world that only can be God's understand. Yeah, we need the, the practical to understand what's beyond our imagination and capability of understanding. Yeah. 
he matters because he understands what it's like to be a love, estrangement from loved ones, of what we feel as human beings. How can such a God save us? I mean, Jesus' divinity makes our salvation a possibility, but Jesus' humanity, his ability to empathize with the human condition is the motivation that makes the possibility a reality. In this one story, we see both the divinity and the humanity of Jesus. We just understand that God might know firsthand that we humans experience and thank God for acting on that. Amen. Today, we're invited to be part of a resurrection story. Our offerings this morning will join together, just, just like the dry bones joined together in Ezekiel's vision. When joined together, they will bring new life, not only to this congregation, but to God's work throughout the world. Our tithes and our offerings will be received through the offering plate, through the mail slot, through Canada Post, or through Canada Helps. And we sing verse 1 of 218. We praise you, O God. to join me in the prayer. God of life, lay sinews and flesh on the dry bones. Of light and life, just thirst. Amen. Are there any prayer requests this morning? Okay. Jesus, vulnerable and alone in the desert, you faced and withstood temptation. Be with us in our struggles and temptations, that by your strength we may reject evil in whatever form it comes. Yes. This week we pray especially for the people of the Czech Republic, be with St. Andrew's Westminster United Church and their minister, the Reverend Sue Browning. 
Jesus, you wept alone at Gethsemane. Be with all who feel alone, all who face difficult decisions. Jesus, you wept. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Be with all who are tortured, all who are victims, all who suffer from disaster, whether of human or natural origin. Jesus, you wept over the death of Lazarus. Be with all who grieve, especially the friends and family of Jack Killens and Ken Sheeler. Jesus, you offered up prayers with loud cries and tears. Hear our prayers, our requests for those who are ill or dying, awaiting medical intervention or recovering from medical treatment. We pray for those of our own hearts. Jesus, you wept in sympathy and frustration. You know our pains and our joys. Be with us this day and always as we pray, singing. Our closing hymn is number 586, We Shall Go Out With Hope of Resurrection.
in the valley like a heap of dry bones. Go, confident that death, or what feels like death, is not the end. That death... Sometimes we feel broken. Go confident that God is with us in life, in death, in life beyond death. We go with joy, sharing this good news with all who we meet. May it be so. Amen. Amen.